Hello and welcome to The Idea. I'm Angela Heron with Harvard Business Review, and I'm here today with Paul Zak, the author of The Moral Molecule. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Paul, your research has focused on the hormone oxytocin and the way it impacts our feelings and behaviors. Can you tell us a little bit about what your research found? Right, so we've done 10 years with experiments in the laboratory and in the field, show that oxytocin works as a kind of moral molecule. It's like a gyroscope that guides us through our interactions with strangers and friends and tells us when it's appropriate to connect and when it's appropriate to pull back. Now, you found this in a number of different experiments. Can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of experiments you ran and what kinds of outcomes you discovered? Our first experiment looked at trust. So we trust strangers all the time. The question is why? How do we know when to trust and when not to trust? And we showed that when you transfer money to someone denoting trust, your brain releases oxytocin, and the more oxytocin on board, then the more the person will reciprocate that trust and share the gains of investment. So this tells us how we organize our economic systems and even our social lives around individuals, most people, most of the time, behaving well. So I hear you talking about building trust, which makes me wonder what kind of implications was your research have for those of us in the workplace? How might we use this if we're managers or employers? Right, so managers and organizations have a neuroscience problem, which is harnessing brains together for a common purpose. What we've shown is that oxytocin, this molecule of connection and attachment and care about an outcome, is more powerful than using, for example, fear as a motivator. We'll actually have rearranged my entire lab of 35 people around this research. So oxytocin makes us feel empathy. And so I think this empathy channel is something leaders need to have to get that extra information. So for example, I've worked much harder on monitoring how people are feeling. Are they engaged in their work? If they're not intervening, so my job is to be the coach to make you successful. It's doing things like funding parties, funding social hours, having time to get together. We've been bringing dogs to work because petting a dog releases oxytocin. So what we want to do is have people feel engaged, have them feel like my colleague Peter Drucker said, like they're a knowledge worker, they're an important part of this environment, and they're a fully developed human being, not just a cog in the wheel. And when you do that, people in my lab are much more productive, they're happier, and we're actually doing better work. What if I want to make my team more collaborative? How might I be thinking about the release of oxytocin and how I could get more of this? Right, so there's a variety of ways you can do it. The easiest, I think, is transparency. So as a team leader, if you identify what our goals are, how we're going to get there, and you uh, put some stress on individuals, say, look, we need to make this goal, but I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen when we get there. So really clear outcome measures is a very good way of building trust. If you flip that in reverse, if your team does not know what your goals are, what your agenda is, how are you going to get there? They don't know if they should trust you or not, and so you, now you have this fear mechanism coming in, or even a defensive mechanism, both of which inhibit the release of oxytocin and also therefore inhibit cooperative behavior. A lot of concern about building an ethical culture today. How might the release of oxytocin help us in building a more ethical culture in our workplaces? So what we found is that oxytocin uh, provides the right system to tell us what's appropriate and not appropriate. We're working in very old areas of the brain. These are feelings. Uh, it, it induces a sense of empathy. And what we found is this ground-up approach to morality. That is, uh, although we need uh, workplaces, governments, to set clear boundaries because our brains live in this sea of chemicals and our moral intuitions can fail, it's very much empowering the individual to do what he or she thinks is right. And most of the time, for 95% of the people we've tested, when the situation warrants, when you're nice, they'll play nice back. And I think that's very important. I think human beings are actually better than we get credit for. You did some research with oxytocin and uh, behaviors online. Can you tell us about that? Well, so we wondered if online activities would sort of crowd out in-person interactions. So there are a number of studies in which people use social media in private, doing whatever they want. We found that 100% of the people using social media of any type have an increase in oxytocin. And indeed, the release of oxytocin told us how closely connected they were to the person they were interacting with online. So all connection is good connection. So from workplace environment, it means, yeah, going on Facebook for 20 minutes a day, maybe not so bad when you're on a break from whatever you're doing. They're going on for four hours a day, of course, not appropriate. But that connection is invigorating, gives us energy, and also motivates us to continue to be part of that group. This sounds like such powerful information. Why have people not known about the uses of oxytocin before? It's a great question. It's because there was no medical disorder associated with too much or too little oxytocin. So this ancient little chemical in our brains was just sitting on the shelf waiting for someone to discover it. Having said that, it's also hard to measure. So it required some tight experimental protocols to actually coax this out of the brain, get this little shy molecule to appear and capture it. 
But once we figured out how to do that, we saw that so many activities that we do, from workplace activities to rituals to praying to marching for soldiers, cause a release of oxytocin and get people working together as a team. Paul, this has been a fascinating look at your research and at how the hormone oxytocin may be at work in our workplaces. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.